it came at a good time, if you will, the church collapsing and all that, because it was close to when the mine was on its downturn. It was one of those periods where you were faced with a challenge that you really wanted to take on, you know, and a challenge that, you know, saying, hey, this is the heart of our community. You know, the church is, is the oldest building in Cuesta. And, and for us to just say goodbye to the oldest building and something that has produced and helped, you know, many people in the community in, in different ways. To be able to preserve that and reconstruct this church, for me was like a, like a symbol of, well, you know, it shows what people can do if they put their mind to it. And in a way, we're trying to reconstruct our community because of the blow that we had because of the closing of the mine. by tomorrow. Okay. I mean, it's not, it's not actually early, but yeah. I think the good thing about this community is that it's older than the mine. It's older than, you know, it has more, more depth to it than a mining community. And I think that's important because people are able to still go back and say, look, we're here before this. You know, we have dealt with worse things, you know, besides the closing of the mine. And we can go back to other things that have, uh, you know, help people live in this community. Quest has been in and out of this mining industry for over 100 years. And it's had its, its boom and it's had its bust. And I think this is the time for us to not only to survive, but now to thrive in a whole different light and, and, and recreate another chapter or maybe another book of what Quest is going to be like for the next hundred years. For me, you know, Quest is a, it's just home. It's just a nice, uh, safe, it's just home. I've chosen to be here and I, you know, had the opportunity to open this up again, a store. We changed it, it's not a grocery store, it's still a market, but uh, I'm just really happy and proud to keep the Rael name going here in Cuesta. You really want your community to flourish, you know, and you really want people to do what they want to do here. You know, if they want their own business, if they want to work for someone else, if they want just to come, a place to come back, you know, you want that and you want Cuesta to stay like that. In the 60s, you know, this was a great place to come fishing. I've heard that at one point, uh, like a majority or one of the places in New Mexico where fishing licenses were sold was right here in this little town. You know, and I'm proud to say that, you know, my dad was one of those vendors, you know, and, you know, my dad's friend Norbert, you know, where we bought his station, you know, his gas station at the time, he was another vendor. So here's these two guys, you know, selling fishing licenses to a lot of people. To really excel here, you're gonna to have to look at what you got around you. And what we have is all natural resources and it's everything that everybody else doesn't have. You know, and so if it's not the recreational, what is it gonna be? Smile. 
again. Easiest route you see, it drops off right here. Right? One of the big projects that I've been tasked with is the Pueblo received a grant to investigate their cutthroat trout population here because they have something that is just so cool, which is a core population of Rio Grande cutthroat trout. It's been verified that they are at least 98.5% genetically pure. They could be more, but that's the threshold, which apparently is something that's been extremely rare nowadays. When you say it, it sounds so amazing, like, wow, we have this genetically pure population. And then you look at it and you're like, well, yeah, they're in this literally untouched territory on Taos Pueblo where things have, these people have been, they call it time immemorial. And we like to preserve what was here when we got here. It needs to survive just like us. They knew that they had cutthroat trout. They saw a trend that they were kind of disappearing, being stressed, the population was becoming limited, and wanted to see what we were working with. The rivers that they are in here also have brown trout. I'm looking at how far the brown trout go up into cutthroat territory and what might be limiting them from accessing other sites, moving upstream for spawning, or being able to come back to lower sites once that's done. When you're in a certain area and you look at things like, wow, what's supposed to be here? And you catch a cutthroat. It's so much more exciting. You feel like you're catching a piece of history. The cutthroat is slowly dwindling, but they're still there. So there's hope that we can still bring it back and introduce more. Knowledge is power and, you know, a community with knowledge, they can actually make changes and do something that's going to make a difference. Uh, as far as I can remember back, you know, it was pretty much based on cutthroats here as growing up as a kid. To me, that was a big thing just to go fishing with a grandpa and learn how to fish and bring it home and put it on the table, feed it to the family and show my kids. You know, at the time I was a little girl, I didn't know. But learning that as a kid, you'll always have that in the back of your mind. There's several, several different uh, headwaters that come out of the canyons that all the exceptional cutthroats, which are, you know, red belly, you know, and there's not a whole lot of them, you know. You know, once in a while, they'll keep a couple, but, you know, you don't want to keep 10, you know. I see the community, you know, where I guess we're being seen as, we've got good elk here, good fishing, just about everything to offer, which is camping, RV, and we've got an RV park in town, you know, hiking, you know, cabins here in town. So, yeah, I see it as a good thing, you know, it prospers. Being 30 years ago, nobody even knew what Cuesta was. How do you not tear the fiber from the community but still add this new color to it? And you can't do one thing and make a living in Cuesta. The people I know do two or three things, you know. Instead of beating the hell out of yourself getting firewood to go sell, imagine if you could sell, a, you know, if you had five day trips of, you know, even just five day trips of fishing where you're able to make enough money that it would, you don't have to go for firewood. For my part, I think it's trying to get as many people on board to believe that what this community can be, you know, without moving them out, you know what I mean? Without gentrification coming in. I mean, there's room for more people to come and move into this community and help it become a thriving community. 
the most important thing, if you want a culture to thrive and to survive and to be strong, well, you have to share it. You can't just be that little culture of your own, isolated. You know, for me, like, like Cuesta belongs to me. But that means that Cabresto belongs to the country. That's what it means. We teach our kids is like, well, you live in a place that you can take advantage of things and you can still live in this place. You might not make city wages, but go look out to your door. You have a millionaire's dream.